Hi everyone, so in this video we'll be investigating applications of neutralization reactions in everyday life and in industry. Here are the syllabus dot points. So neutralization is necessary in agriculture to maintain an appropriate level of pH levels in the soil. So actually the pH of the soil will change the availability of the nutrients which are available to them. And so really the plants are going to be quite sensitive to pH and will be unable to grow if it's too acidic or if it's too alkaline. So if the soil is too acidic, what we'll do is we'll add some of this powdered lime, CaO, or limestone, CaCO3, which are both uh, basic compounds, and they will neutralize the H plus ions which are in the soil. So if the soil is too basic, what we'll do is instead we'll do the opposite. We need to introduce H plus ions into the soil. So we're going to add compost and manure, which will then decompose to release organic acids. Like one such example will be the release of CO2 from the compost, decomposing, and they'll form carbonic acid. So in industry, the burning of fossil fuels actually releases quite a lot of SO2, which is sulfur dioxide gas. And sulfur oxides are particularly bad because they're going to be forming acid rain when reacting with the water in the atmosphere. So for example, we have the reaction here, SO2, which is sulfur dioxide, is going to react with O2, oxygen gas, in order to form this sulfur trioxide. And now the issue is when the sulfur trioxide reacts with the water, which is in the rain or in the clouds, we're going to be forming H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid. So again, the way that we're going to neutralize it is we're going to use either lime or limestone to neutralize the gases which are released. So this should be pretty obvious to us by now that when we want to neutralize an acid or a base, we need to use the opposite of each other. So for example, if I have an acid spill, I'm going to be using the base. Uh, and in this case, we're going to be using Na2CO3 as our weak base in order to neutralize our acid. The reason why we want to do this is because if we remember, the reaction between a strong acid and a strong base is a highly exothermic one. So I wouldn't be reacting, for example, sodium hydroxide to neutralize uh, any HCl which I have. And this goes the same for an acid which we're going to use to neutralize a base spill. In medicine, we we'll use these so-called antacid tablets, which are usually ALOH3 or MGOH2, and we use them to neutralize the gastric acid, HCl. So we have HCl in our stomach, which is being refluxed by the patient, which is why they're experiencing heartburn and indigestion. We can understand that an antacid tablet is a base because, you know, the name itself, antacid, is an anti-acid tablet. Now, in the opposite scenario, we're going to be using vinegar, which is a common remedy for things like wasp and jellyfish stings. Now, this is going to be a good solution because the toxins which come from these wasp and jellyfish stings are going to be alkaline in nature. And vinegar, as we should know, contains acidic acid, CH3COOH. We also know this as ethanoic acid. In everyday life, we also have neutralization reactions. So the baking powder, for example, we have uh, some rising muffins over here. They contain sodium hydrogen carbonate, NaHCO3. And when we add water to the baking soda, the reaction between the carbonate and the water is going to release CO2, uh, which is what is going to be helping to rise the cakes and the doughs. And that is what gives them the signature airy texture for baked goods. Toothpaste on the other spectrum are alkaline, and they are alkaline to help prevent the acidity decaying food particles in our teeth. So remember earlier we talked about the decaying of compost in agriculture in order to introduce H plus ions into the soil. Well, this is kind of similar in that we have decaying food particles in our teeth and they're going to be releasing CO2 and also creating organic acids which are going to be decaying our teeth. So toothpaste are going to uh, vary in their composition. They're going to contain things like aluminium hydroxide, the hydrogen phosphate ion, carbonate ion and the fluoride ion.